Hi and welcome to another episode of Reaper TV. In this video I want to show you something that's been added to the latest version of Neutron 2 by Isotope and that's the visual mixer. This is a fantastic way of visualizing all of the different pieces of audio in a soundscape so you can position them exactly as you want to get really creative in how your audio sounds. So let's just jump into Reaper, open a track up and take a look at how we can use this visual mixer. So I've opened Reaper and I've loaded a session in and I'm ready to start working now so we can add in this particular visual mixer setup. So what we need to do, come down to our effects browser and I'm in my isotope section so I've got everything sectioned out. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to type in visual mixer or visual and you can see we've got two options available. We've got the VST and the VST3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag that up onto my master track. And we're going to put that below everything else. It's the last thing in my stacking order to start off with for this example. And you can see that gives us a visual representation of the 3D space in our session. At the moment, there's nothing in there because it doesn't have anything within Neutron or Neutron applied to it to be able to see that information. So I'm going to give you a simple example. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this filter. And I'm going to come over and I'm going to load in an instance of Neutron 2. So I'm going to bring that up and I'm going to drop that onto my guitar center track. So that'll load up Neutron. Gives me the options to go through and set a few bits and pieces up on there. I can sort of EQ this, mix it, I can use the track assistant, whatever I want. For now, I'm going to leave that as is. So it's just, just using that to sort of pull it into the visual mixer. So we'll close that down. And now if you go to the visual mixer, you'll see we've got an instance of Neutron in there. Now I'm just going to set this, I'm going to double click, I'm going to set it to be center guitar. Because this is a track that kind of runs down the center of my audio. So let's take a look at what this interface does and then we'll test it out and show you exactly what's going on. We've got this representation. So we've got the center line which is the volume of this particular track in our soundscape. So at the moment it's at 0 dB, so in other words it's not being affected. The levels that are set inside the actual mixer itself will be the overall mix level inside our audio session, our track. We can override that by literally bringing this up closer so that'll boost the volume and you can see it tells us underneath an increase of 5.29 decibels. Or we can drop it back down so we've got those options that we want to set up the volume. We can also position it in sound. So we can push this over to the left hand side, we can push it over to the right hand side, whatever we want to do. So we can easily position that in 3D space. We also have this little icon that shows us a sort of elongated circle and we've got these little grab handles on the left and right hand side. And this is all to do with the st stereo soundscape of this particular piece of audio. So we drag that towards the middle, that'll have it fully mono. So at the moment that we have full mo fully mono track with 0 dB boost right down the center. So we'll be right in the middle of our track. If we push that over to the left hand side, it will be a mono track over to the left hand side and so on. So, let's just have a listen to this and see what actually happens. So let's just set, solo this track out. So I've only got that there, and we're only going to listen to that particular piece of audio. Okay, so let's play this back. So you can see, as you'd expect, this is a fully mono track right down the center with no boost in audio level. So what I'm going to do now is I'll play it back and I'll start to move this around, increase the volume in there, decrease the volume, push it up to the left, the right hand side. And you can hear it then, get a real feel for how this moves around the soundscape. So let's have a listen to that. Okay, so you can hear as I move that around, it increases the volume, decreases the volume, and positions itself accordingly. But with these grab handles, we can also increase the amount of stereo imaging that's applied to this. So let's take another example where I'll just leave this in the center, but we'll increase the stereo imaging, and you'll hear the sound that this gives us.
So as you can hear, we can increase the stereo space that this uses, we can shrink it back down to mono, we can position it in our audio soundscape. And this is really, really cool because this gives you the ability to visually see all of the different instruments, where they are, how wide they are, and you can then adjust things to get them exactly as you want in a much more straightforward fashion by using this positioning than it is just by using the left and right pan and the volume levels and so on, which is kind of... It's okay, but it doesn't give you any kind of visual representation of where things are. You've only got an audible representation, and being able to see where you want to position them can really help the whole sort of experience of what you're trying to achieve here. There's a couple of other cool features that I really like about this as well. First thing I want to sort of go through is you see that I had to put an instance of Neutron onto this particular track to call this up and get it into the visual mixer. And this is the sort of inter-application link that you have between all the different components inside Neutron and Ozone. But we don't need to put a full instance of Neutron on there. We don't even need to put any kind of instance of Neutron on there. What we can do, if I close this down a second, come to our FX browser, and what we've got available is the Neutron 2 Mix Tab. What that does is it's a very simple link between these different inter-application sort of programs. So what I can do is I can drag and drop this onto, let's say, for example, my guitar left. Once I've done that, it puts this on there, and you can see it just gives us mix tap, which we can re rename this if we want to. Let me say guitar left. We've got some options in there, but we can leave everything as is, and it's a very low latency, very low sort of resource uh, sort of link between those two applications. So we can now close that down. Let's put a couple more of those on there and we'll say we'll put this on guitar right as well. So we'll just rename this. So we've now got that information there and if we wanted to we could come down to any of the drum pieces, the bass and so on. We can apply this little mix tap either to each individual track or if we're using master and parent tracks and so on we can sort of drop it on there. So I can say, well, I'm going to do the same on the bass, but I'm going to put this onto the bass master so I can now control the master bass everywhere. So again, we'll name this bass master. And we'll just close that down. Now, if we go back to the Neutron 2 visualizer, you can see we now have a visual representation of those different instruments. If we look on the right-hand side, we've got the bass master, guitar center, guitar left, guitar right. So I can click on any of those, position them wherever I want in my soundscape, make them as wide or as sort of shallow as I want. So I can make sure the bass is completely mono. I don't want any widening on that. But the guitars I may want to make wider. I may want to sort of push those over. So the guitar right and the guitar left is sort of more spacious. So they have a nice overlap, but they're still positioned left and right. So we can control that independently of our mixer. So we've now got a lot of control visually over how this actually looks and sounds. Not only that, we can, if we want, to use these mix snapshots. So we can try out a mix, try some different things in there, save that as a snapshot. We can try something else, save that as another snapshot, and repeat that for a third time and apply that to a third snapshot. So we can easily audition these different sort of layouts, these different visual and audio layouts, and then we can switch between them just by using these snapshots very quickly and easily. And to create a snapshot, very easy. All we need to do is have the audio set up that we want, simply come up to either the A, B or C snapshot, click on the set, and there we go. We've now got that. So we can just position these somewhere else, adjust anything we want on there. So we can make that narrower, position them anywhere. All we need to do, come and click set on the second option. And now we can audition those by clicking on the A or the B. And you can see it immediately changes the way the soundscape is actually displayed in the visual mixer and all the settings we set up in there. So very, very cool. That's all I really wanted to show you. I thought this was one of those great additions to a fantastic piece of software that just makes something that is quite difficult to visualize a whole load easier just by doing it in this fashion. Well, I hope you found the video useful. I hope it's given you a great insight into how you could use the visual mixer for yourself. If you did enjoy the video, please hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all the new content we add every single week. And don't forget to hit the bell icon just to make sure that you get notified. If you have any comments, questions or feedback on this video or anything else we cover on the channel or anything else you'd like to see in future videos, please pop those in the comment section below. And until next time, happy mixing.